look at what is happening at Move Church. Membership Sunday will be June 4th. If you are interested in becoming a member or would like to serve on the ministry team, this Sunday is for you. There will be an orientation meeting at 9 a.m. that day. You can make a difference. Attention graduates, if you have graduated high school or college this year and you attend Move Church, we would like to acknowledge you next Sunday, May 28th during the 11 a.m. service. To be included, email your name, the school you graduated from, and your future plans to movechurch at gmail.com. Ladies, Summer Small Group Women of the Bible Speak begins June 11th at 2 p.m. at the church and will meet every other Sunday. If you would like to come, please sign up at the welcome table in the floor. Frequency Youth meets every Sunday afternoon from 5 p.m. till 6.45 p.m. for youth between the ages of 11 to 18 years old. Don't let your team miss there are four ways to give here at Move Church. You can give with the Tithely app or on our website at movechurch.com. Mail in your tithe offering or other contributions to our P.O. box or on the back of the church in the giving box. Morning. Ooh. I think you only may have gotten morning. Good morning. Welcome to Move Church. Are you excited to be here today? Places of defeat. I'm walking on troubles. Death has no hold on me. I'm standing in the fire, but I can't feel the heat. In the middle of the battle, I sing for victory because I know who I am. I'm more than a con. I'm more than a conqueror In Jesus' name I can do all things I am I am who you say I am I am who you say I am I am yours I am loved I'm more than a conqueror God good this morning. I'm dancing in valleys, places of defeat. I'm walking on dry bones, death has no hold on me. I'm setting in the fire, but I can't feel the heat. In the middle of a battle, I sing for victory because I know who I am. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. In Jesus' name, I can do all things. I am. I am who you say.
Well, good morning. We're glad that you're with us this morning. Um, we're just going to spend a, the next few moments just fiddling out our giving envelopes and our uh, first-time guest connection cards. If you're a first-time guest, can we give them a round of applause this morning? If you're watching online, we're glad that you've joined us. We would like for you to share this video. Um, so for the next few moments, let's do that. And if you're not going to do either one of those things, um, find someone next to you and tell them that you're glad that they're here. So let's do that. Church, let's sing that again. 
we welcome you in this place we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor Turn it 
for good. You turn it for good. Oh, you take, you take the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for But man, there are times where he just shows up and just, just make sure you know it. And I think this is what that's happening. This is just the tidal wave of grace. This is what I felt in my spirit. And what happens when you experience that, just like a tidal wave, it pulls you closer to the Lord. It's going to pull you away from that thing that's kept you from God, and it's going to pull you closer to him. Would you close your eyes just for a moment? You're feeling like your failure you can never overcome. You feel like you are too far from God. Can I tell you, the devil is a lie today. And I pray, take advantage of this moment. Ask God to wash over your soul with his grace. Would you do that now? Lord, show me your grace. I know I've heard about it. The song says it's amazing. I need to experience it today. Lord, would you do that? I, I felt, Lord, that in the spirit, you are coming in might. You're coming in abundance with grace. Grace that can be felt. Grace that's experience, but grace that can be felt and it's going to pull you closer to 
pull us closer to you. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Now, I pray that you would let them feel your presence, every one of us. Let us feel your presence right now. If you would ask the Lord to touch you today with his presence, would you just raise your hand? Touch me today, Lord God. Touch me. I don't need, I know you exist. I don't need a feeling to know that. But, Lord, it, it feels good. And I pray today, Lord God, that you would move on hearts in such a way we know it. We know it. We know you're working in our lives. We know that you've forgiven us. Let us feel it today. Lord God, that we know your love is toward us greater than we could ever imagine. Father, I thank you. I thank you for touching us, your people today. Thank you for grace. Thank you for grace. We all need it. Thank you, Lord, that you showed it to us and we did not deserve it. In Jesus' name.
Worship. I just want us to stand in awe in the presence of the Lord for just a moment. Just to acknowledge His goodness and to acknowledge who He is and who His Spirit is. Father, we come to you today, Lord, and just in all of your spirit and all of your presence. Lord, we thank you for meeting us here this morning. Thank you for, for touching earth here this morning. God, I just ask that as we go through this message and as we go through today's service, Lord, that you just be with us, Lord, just to open hearts and just to open us up to what you have for us, Lord, for the person that may have walked in here without hope this morning or without strength. God, I just pray that you renew them right where they're at this morning. Lord, just give them a little bit of expectation of what you can do in their life this morning. 
Lord, and I pray for that person here this morning who is not a believer and who hasn't committed their life to you. Lord, for there to be life changed this morning in this place. God, we want to thank you for who you are and how good you are to us. Lord, I just pray as Brother Bobby comes and as he gives this message today, Lord, you just speak through him. Lord, place his dependence upon you. For our, for our behalf this morning, God, I want to thank you for our pastors who serve us so diligently and so faithfully. Lord, we lift them up to you. Lord, we just thank you for them. We thank you for who you are and who you always will be. God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We give you all the praise and all the honor in this place this morning. In your heavenly name, I pray. Amen. Evan, we're going to be late. Come on, time for school. Um, Evan, today is college and career day. Um, I thought you were going as a pastor. What are you, what are you wearing? What do you mean? I am as a pastor. Well, looking at you, you don't look like any pastor I've seen, and I thought you were going to go kind of like Pastor Bobby, so I need some something. What's with the apron? Well, pastor does much more than just preach, Mama. He cooks, he cleans, he painted the room back there. Have you seen that? I did see that. That was nice. Mm -hmm. What about the screwdriver, Evan? Do you think he knows anything about electrical? I mean, really? I mean, I know he uses it. He does. He does. Okay, so what about the vest? Why do you have the vest on? Well, whenever there's a bunch of cars out there and he has to move them around. Okay, okay. So you're telling me that pastors don't just come on Sunday and preach? Because I know when I see Pastor Bobby, he, he just comes up here and preaches. So what are you trying to tell me, Evan? Well, of course, he does a lot behind the scenes. Well, okay, I get it now. So you're going to be Pastor Bobby today, and you're going to remind us about Pastor Appreciation. But I have one more question. Why the mask? I mean, really? Because he's my superhero. Aww. Okay, you go. Y'all, we have a really wonderful pastor here at Move Church, and I'm going to read um, some scriptures about him. In Colossians 3, 16 and 17, it says, Let the message of Christ fill your lives. Teach and cancel each other as all wisdom he gives. Whether you do or say, do it as a representative of the word. Jesus gives thanks through him to God the, the Father. In Matthew 4.19 says, come. I left my glasses at the office, sorry. Matthew 4.19 says, come and follow me and I shall make you fishers of men. Pastor Bobby does all those things. He gives us great counsel. If you ever had something that you need to talk to him about, he has wonderful wisdom. But it's not just godly wisdom. God Pastor Bobby seeks God before he comes and counsels you. He prays with you, and he gives you such wonderful advice if you ever talk to him. You know, he has made fishers of men. He has trained us to be disciples, to go out and to train others. Evan comes up here, and he may look funny, but, you know, Pastor Bobby does a lot of things behind the scenes that you never know about. He really does unclog a toilet if it needs it. We had electric the electrician thing for our air conditioner broke and pastor bobby was able to fix it he has painted our foyer he does a whole lot of things but we would be lost today at move charge if we didn't have him and pastor bobby today we want to honor you and we thank you for being such a wonderful leader for our church not not much left to say after that but anyway today we just want to return things to you and to pastorette patty for uh, all that you do and so this is just a small token of our, our giving. And um, you've taught us things like how to love others. You've taught us how, and encouraged us how to grow and to dream big. And you teach us how to love by setting an example of how to love others. And church, I just want to encourage y'all because sometimes Pastor Bobby just ends up being a dump truck. You know, because we, okay, I'm number one at it. You come in and you just dump on him. And um, so I'm trying to be more considered on Sunday mornings, especially when he's got a word to give us and not to dump on him, you know, because he don't have time to go undump it in front of God. <laughs> but, but if we could just be a little bit more careful maybe about when we dump, it's okay to dump on him because he can handle it. He's, he's a big boy. But, um, but I want to encourage you all this year, 
Let's do something different. So we take one day to thank uh, this precious couple who gives of their 365 days a year, 24-7. And so this year, if we could just encourage them during the year. And then by the time we come back next year to have a pastor appreciation, he'll know that he's been appreciated all year long. So let's don't forget to tell him thank you and encourage him because even though he knows how to take his disappointments and his trials to the Lord and dump it on him, then he needs that encouragement from us because we love him. We really love him. And we really appreciate him. So there's a basket here. You can put your gifts or your cards or your uh, offerings to, to him in here. You can put it back in the box. We'll make sure that he gets it. And you can also uh, gift them on tithely. So we appreciate what y'all do for Pastor Bobby, but we really, really love y'all and appreciate you. And me and Patty feel very blessed. Thank you for being a wonderful people. I mean, a easy church to pastor. And Evan, I'm looking for an associate pastor to take on some of those duties. So thank you, man, for that. <laughs> and Patty don't like it. I, I, I try to call Patty Pastor Patty. She don't like that. Pastor Patty. And uh, <laughs> Kelly, you got it, didn't you, Kelly? That's a youth pastor. Youth pastors get that kind of stuff. And uh, Kelly does want to see if you have a teen, um, uh, a teenager in your house, or you know of one. There is a youth camp coming up that Kelly would just like to talk to you. Uh, just a few moments following the service this morning, right up on the front row. If you have a teen, just come up and take a listen. It's exciting, so uh, if you'll take just a few moments following the service, come up and meet with him. Okay, uh, I want to jump into the message today. Uh, it, we're in the middle of a series called Crazy Faith. I think there will be one more message um, to that. Oh, I also want to say if you are a college graduate or a high school graduate, uh, uh, you graduated this semester, if you would all send your information, it's in the announcements to Move Church at Gmail. If you attend Move Church, send your information to Move Church at Gmail, okay? We want to acknowledge you next Sunday in the second service. We have a few college and high school graduates. Okay, jumping right in, we're on a quest not only to be people of faith, but to be people of crazy faith. The bigger the faith, the crazier it may seem. It's crazy because it goes beyond our mental limitations. It's extreme. It goes against the world's view. And the Bible says it's without faith, it's impossible to please God. So it's safe to assume that if we have crazy faith, that it pleases God. And when you please God, he will let you know it. And last Sunday, we looked at a mom who had some crazy faith, and she received her miracle. Today, it's a story of some guys who had crazy faith. Let's look at it in Mark chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. It says, and when he, talking about Jesus, returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. Jesus came home, but he didn't get rest. Verse 2, it says, and many were gathered together so that there was no more room, not even at the door. So people have crowded in the house where Jesus is staying, and he was preaching the word to them. And they came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. Now they're tearing up Jesus' house. And when they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. Verse 5. Well, let me, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and get to verse 5. And when Jesus saw 
their faith. Would you say their faith? Not, not the faith of the paralytic. I'm not sure if he had faith or not. But Jesus saw their faith. We know he's talking about the men, the four men. He said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. So he's there for a miracle. He gets the greater miracle, forgiven sins. Can I tell you today, that's the greatest miracle you'll ever experience? Salvation by sins being forgiven, made whole, a relationship with God, becoming a child of God, that's the greatest miracle you can experience. Some of the religious leaders there had a problem with Jesus saying your sins are forgiven. They still didn't accept him as the son of God. And Jesus said, what's easier for me to heal this man of his body or remove his sins? He said, but so you'll know that I have the, the authority to remove sins, to forgive sins. I'll just heal him. So verse 11, he says, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed and go home. Now, I think I would have said, rise, pick up your bed, fix my roof, <laughs> and go home. And he rose and immediately picked up his bed. Isn't that a, a, so wonderful? He got up, picked up his own bed. He didn't know, need nobody to carry his bed out. He could carry it himself. And went out before them all so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. And if you are a person of big faith, crazy faith, you are setting yourself on a path to see things you have never seen before. And we want to be people like that. We want to experience all that God has for us to experience. Jesus saw their faith, the men, the four men who brought the paralytic, and because of their faith, the crippled man, the paralyzed man was able to receive his, his miracle. May we be such people of big faith that others that have smaller faith or no faith at all, God can use us to be able to minister to them and put them in a place to receive a miracle. Let's pray for it. Would you bow your head? Father, we want to be people of great faith. Now, Lord, in this room, there are people that have seen you do miracles. We have, we, have, we have seen it with our eyes. And, Lord, don't let any of us be lacking in the faith we need for the next miracle. It would be dishonoring to you if we did not believe you now after what we've experienced in you. Strengthen faith today. Those that have no faith or very little faith today, Father, I pray that it would be given to them. Use us as an example. Grow all of us in our faith. Lord, speak to our hearts today. Would you pray it with me? Lord, speak to my heart. Change my life in Jesus' name. The paralyzed man has some great partners that helped him get his miracle. The message is titled Partners of Faith. Faith has some partners. Faith partners can be people. We'll look at that in a moment. But there's also some supernatural partners of faith that God has given us. And these partners position us in a place of faith so we can receive from Jesus. If you're sitting by someone that God has used to strengthen your faith, just turn to them and say, howdy, partner. Howdy, partner. <laughs> Those people are so important to us. We're going to look at some partners that we have this morning in faith, but first, let's look at some challenges to faith, especially big faith that we all experience, and we see them in this story. If you're taking notes, four challenges of faith. The first one is this. When you're going to walk in faith, it's guaranteed that you will have some obstacles, this paralyzed man had some huge obstacles. The first one is obvious. He was paralyzed. And sometimes, if we're not careful, we can be people who say that we believe in God, but we can be paralyzed in our faith. We can get to a place where we, we understand that God 
is God and that he can do anything but through certain circumstances, maybe disappointments, maybe our, our expectations were, were in a different place. Uh, we expected it to turn out one way and it doesn't seem like it's working out the way that we're telling God it needs to. And if we're not careful, we can get paralyzed in our faith. What does that look like? The pastor would say, if you need a miracle, come down front. We want to pray for it, and you no longer get out of your seat. We can get paralyzed. We're not moving. We're not, we, we think, okay, I'm not moving back, but we're not moving forward either. And remember, I said the first Sunday, faith is forward and up. The Bible says from faith to faith. So we can be paralyzed. There was a crowd that he had to overcome. And can I tell you, there's just always going to be something that there's going to be a crowd. There's so many needs, so many people. How can Jesus pay attention to me? Everybody needs something from the Lord. Why would he listen to me? We can have those thoughts and and we can think, uh, first of all, I don't deserve it. There are people with greater needs and But the Lord is a personal Lord. He cares about you. And if it's concerning you, it's concerning to him. Today, you cannot worry about the crowd. He's got his eyes on you. He's a big enough God to do that, isn't he? To have everybody in his heart at one time and minister to every need. If I went through and had this microphone, you know, I've noticed the older I get, the more we talk about sickness and medicines. Man, You know, I got this thing, and I'm taking this medicine, and we can't even pronounce the sicknesses or the medicines we're taking. And then the medicines cause other problems. How many do you even know what I'm talking about? If I pass this microphone and said, tell me about your sickness, tell me about your medicine, we would be so whipped by the time we left. Like, can God do anything? Overwhelmed. But God can do it all. Every disease Every sickness has been paid for by the blood of Jesus. Believe it for yourself. You can't deserve it. There's no way you can be good enough. He's just a good God like we just sang about. Amen? Now, if you don't know it, I'm already preaching, so you can encourage me a little bit. Obstacles. The second one is this. This is a big one for us men especially. We need help. Now, wives don't look at us and elbow us at the moment. But we we all get weak, don't we? Spiritually, we all don't stay on the mountaintop. At church, I know, I know we do the good game of how you doing, I'm fine, how you doing? But we're really not. It's hard sometimes. The paralyzed man could not get his miracle himself. He had to have some people to rely on, and you need people to rely on. That's the reason why your church family is so important. If if you have a church family that you don't feel like you can call on them and rely on them, you're probably in the wrong place, or you haven't put yourself in a place to have those kind of people in your life. Can I tell you, they're at Move Church. We don't like to rely on others. Sometimes we have to. Do you have those kind of people in your life that you can call on? Don't take them for granted and do not abuse them. But get yourself some people that you know that are there with you through thick and thin. The third one is this. Oh, this is a big one. Another obstacle to faith is it requires some action. Faith requires it. James 2 says this, What good is it, my brothers, if someone says to you he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to him, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for their body, what good is that? They also, so also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. 
This is a little phrase that I have that I've, I've seen in my own life that if you're going to be a person of faith, you're going to have big faith. Big faith is also known as sweaty faith. Sweaty faith. It requires some action on your behalf. It requires you to put feet to your faith. And some people are waiting on God, and God is waiting on you. Ooh, is this okay today? I mean, and it requires us to take action. Now, a little side note to that so important. Don't try to figure it all out, though. Just take the next step. You can't handle the 10th step. The 10th step God's going to give you when it's time. You'll be ready for it because he's going to give you the grace to walk through it. Just do the next step. Take the next step in the direction that you feel God is pulling you to. But you got to put some action to it. You got to take some steps. One of these men in this group had, if not all, but at least one of them had some crazy faith. They had to get the paralyzed, excuse me, paralyzed. Where did that word come from? Paralyzed man on the roof with a stretcher, without dropping him. <laughs> the Bible doesn't tell us, but I got a feeling they might have dropped him one time anyway. They had to get him up on the roof. Then they had to tear a hole in the roof. Then they had to lower the man in unison down by rope to get before Jesus. I'm a visual. I like to think things through. That's the way I learn. Can you not picture the debris floating down on the Christ, on the Son of God, getting stuff in his beautiful hair. Doing it all. See, we just read it and think, oh, yeah, they just tore a hole in it. No, 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 this took time. This took effort. And they put him right before Jesus. So it leads us to the question of what lengths are we willing to go through to get some people before Jesus. What, what are we willing to do? How, how, how much sweat are we willing to put in our faith? We know only God could do it. That's the reason why it takes faith. But God expects us to do what we can do so he can do what only he can do. So it takes action. Then the fourth step is this. Faith, big faith, crazy faith. There's an obstacle of opposition. After all the challenges they went through, the, the crowd getting the man before Jesus, there were people in the, quad, the crowd, it says, they questioned Jesus' authority. Our greatest opposition believe it or not, is not other people. Our greatest opposition is not really even the devil. He is an enemy, but he's not the greatest. Your greatest opposition is yourself. Your mind is the greatest problem with your faith. Perception and reasoning of your mind will talk you great right out of great faith. Perception is what you see with your natural senses. Then reasoning is the logical thinking. What I see, I process it. And we can be people who start out in faith but we let reasoning and logical thinking talk us right out of the faith that we had. Maybe it's just me. Did anybody have, have struggled with that? I mean, look, we were at church, and we, man, and the preacher was preaching so good. And the music was good, and the air was set just right, and it feels good. And I said, God, I can't believe it. Then I got home, and the news got worse. And I maybe even took a 
a crazy step toward that. I even put some extra money in the offering, believing for a financial miracle. And I got home and the car broke down. And there's a point when you're walking in faith that your mind will tell you, you're crazy. Have you experienced that? What? It'll be sort of like this. What are you thinking? What are you doing? And there is, that is that logical, that's that, that perception. Oh, things are getting worse. And there's that logical thinking, oh, I got to make this make sense. And crazy, crazy faith will not. You got to stay with faith. When you say that, stay with faith. So these are huge, huge challenges that we all face when it comes to having crazy faith, big faith, believing God in great ways. There are four friends that we have, and the paralyzed man represent, his story represents these four partners of faith that we have available to us or that can be available. And let me give you those. So take good notes. This is so good. If you don't, if you don't need crazy faith right now, you will. You want to know who your partners are. The first one is this, the word of God. Romans 10, 17 says, so faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ, who is the word of God. The word of God within itself, hear me, the word of God within itself does not need faith to work. It works because of the authority and power of God. It's the spoken word. But for it to work in our life, it requires faith. Our faith activates this word. I can read this faith with my mental ability, read this Bible with my mental ability and get nothing from it. So I have to have faith. The good news is faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So the Holy Spirit gives us spiritual hearing to our spirits. And he gives us the faith when we hear it to, to receive this word. That's what happened when you got saved. You gave your life to Christ. There was one Sunday, one time you heard, maybe heard it before, but then that moment you, the realization came, I need Jesus. I'm lost and I'm undone. For Nick, it was sitting at Arby's eating some curly fries when he was about five years old. He had been in church, heard of many messages even up until that point. I wanted to be the one to lead him to Jesus. I, I put that request in. It was a little selfish, I know. But we're sitting at Arby's. He can take you to the place we were sitting. And he said, Dad, I want to be saved. I want to receive Jesus. And right there over some curly fries with some ketchup, we prayed the sinner's prayer. And that was the Holy Spirit's work, giving him the faith to receive from the Lord. And the good news is when you receive it, the Holy Spirit begins to work in your life so it grows. He helps you to receive God's word. And we receive God's word by faith. There's two forms of God's word. There's not two Words of God, maybe that's not a good way to say this title because God's word is God's word. There is no other word, amen? But two ways we can receive from God's word, maybe a better way to say it. First, The first one is this. There's the logos word. That is the written word of God. It is when you read the scripture and just like I said, there's something that jumps off the page to you as you're reading the scripture. For me, as a young Christian, a young man, not really understanding what am I going to do with my life, I thought I was going to be an accountant. Boy, what have I been in a miserable accountant. I had it in my mind, though, I'm going to get a good job. I'm going to get an accounting degree. I'm going to make a lot of money. I was going to drive my BMW, and we're going to get married. God had all that. Just He laughed about that. I mean, he really did. 
and I had given my life to Christ. And I remember reading the word one day, and then there was a scripture that just, it, it leaped off the page. That scripture for me was Psalms 37, 25. It says, I was once young, and now I'm old, which I wouldn't at the time, but I was worried. What am I going to do with my life? I was once young, but now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging bread. And when I read that verse, the Holy Spirit gave me faith. What, what, it, what it did, it said, okay, you put God first. You don't have to worry about it. You don't even have to worry about your kids. God's got it for you. Faith came with that. So there's that logos word. Then the second one is a rhema word. Rhema word, that is the spoken word of God. Now, God speaks from logos. Boy, we're getting deep in this message today, ain't we? It's about time he talks some Greek and some Hebrew. I know about two words. The rhema word. And the rhema word is the spoken word of God to you, and he speaks his logos word. He don't speak contrary to this. But the rhema word is more personal. It's more descriptive to you. Let me give you an example. The logos word is Psalms 100. I think we have these scriptures. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, sins, wickedness, and heals all your diseases. So as you're reading that and you have some things in your life, you can read that with your mind and say, okay, there's, that's grammatically correct, blah, blah, blah. You can open up your heart and say, Lord, I want to receive from you. And then you read that and there is a huge pause. There's a, there's a huge neon sign that says who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. You say, God, I believe it. That's your word, and I receive that. That's a Logos word, and that works. But then that rhema word is, you may not even know this scripture. It, I'm not sure if the crippled man knew any Logos word. I don't. He, this word he might not have known. But he heard, Rise up, take up your mat, and go home. That's a rhema word. It is, I'm going to heal you today. Your miracle is here. I am working it out. Has anybody ever received a rhema word before? And it never will be contrary to the logos word. And both of them you can act on in faith. Faith comes both ways. Amen? Amen. Let me give you the second part. I got to speed up. Second partner is the Spirit of God. So thankful for him and his work. Ephesians 2 8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Now, every time I've read that scripture in the past, I always thought, okay, yeah, grace is a gift. But we, amen. Hallelujah. Somebody just got their rhema word. And so I've always, grace is a gift. That's all God was talking about. But at the same time, faith is a gift. Both of those come from the Lord through the Holy Spirit working in your life. You don't know you need grace until the Holy Spirit reveals that you can receive grace. He, he shows you that you need grace. Then he tells you you can receive grace through Jesus Christ. And that is faith. Your salvation is uh, grace through faith, by faith. So it is both a gift, and the Holy Spirit gives you that gift of faith so you can act on the grace that God already has for you. Does that make sense? So he works uh, faith. He gives us faith to act on faith, and then he perfects our faith. But the Scripture says, look at uh, John 14. It says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, this is Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit, 
he will teach you all things and bring you to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Man, I, I have had the Holy Spirit do that to me before. When I start thinking contrary to what God has already told me, when I begin to be talked out of what I had faith for, I begin to reason, begin to make it logical in my thinking that, well, God, this is the way it's got to work. I'm good at that. And boy, how many times have I had the Holy Spirit say, did I not tell you this? Do, do, do you not remember that? And he reminds me what God has already purposed for me, and then my faith is strengthened all over again. How many of you need that today? Maybe we do. Maybe you do today, and I believe God's going to give you that today. That, that he's going to remind you what God has already said about you. All you need is a word from God. All you need is a rhema word. All you need is a logos word, and you mix some faith with that. You activate it in faith. It's done for you. Mm, boy, I wish I had a church that knew how to get happy. He will give you remembrance. He will lead you to the truth. Man, I've had him tell me, don't think that way. Didn't God say this in his word? You don't have to believe that. Yeah, the doctor said you will not be healed, but the doctor is not God. There's a promise. There's a benefit. But that just doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's crazy, ain't it? It's crazy faith. He will also give you hope to strengthen your faith. I love Romans 15, 13. It's one of my favorite. I've got a, bu a bunch, but may the God of hope, which you've got to have hope to have faith, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Somebody needs that today. Joy and peace in believing, okay, in faith, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. This is the kind of hope that makes you laugh at negative news. Gives you such a peace and such a joy. Yeah, I know the news says this, but, <laughs> but I got a God who's faithful. Man, I need this today. This one is one I don't like, the first the number three, but it is a partner of faith. If you want this one activated in your life to help your faith grow, just raise your hand as soon as you see it. Number three is trials. Who wants a trial? Raise your hand. <laughs> it is a partner of faith. It helps us to grow in our faith. As a matter of fact, this is the way your faith is tested. This is the way faith develops you. 1 Peter 1, 7 these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. See, it seems like believing doesn't have benefits at times. Standing strong, following through, just staying with the Lord. The devil will make you think, oh, yeah, this is not going to happen to you. It's not worth it. There will be a day that the world will see that you were a person of strong faith. The world will see it. God keeps good records. Trials come two ways, problems and people who cause you problems. <laughs> Don't look at nobody right now. Don't look at nobody in this room. <laughs> There's only two ways, problems and people who cause you problems. And boy, don't the devil work through some people. 
And because the Lord wants your faith to grow, he'll make sure you got a Judas amongst your friends. As a matter of fact, that person, you ought to just thank you for strengthening your faith. Thank you. You ought to tell them, I thank you. You perfected a work in me. I thank you. They're going to look at you like you're crazy. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Trials. Let me get to the last one. This is where we close. The fourth one is this. Faith-filled friends. I'm so glad Move Church is full of faith-filled friends. We need them. There's a time that you'll have to be the friend that has to be toted. But please just don't be that friend that has to be toted all the time. Amen? Be the friend that can tote somebody sometimes. And that's where we all, that should be our goal, right? To grow up in our faith and where we can help someone else. Yeah, we got to be helped sometimes. But we just don't want to be the one helped all the time. We want to grow up in our faith. In the second service, last week, I think we had 30 some kids. I don't know. It's a bunch of, I talked to one of Rhonda's helpers back there. She was exasperated. I mean, she was like, we had this many kids. They're toting these kids. They're toting them. In the nursery, they're literally toting them. But they're toting our kids. They don't know yet. They're being told. They're being taught by faith-filled friends. Man, don't we need them? And one day, these kids grow up. Patty's got a picture. She showed me the other day of, um, early on in Move Church, there was a class that she taught, and it was compassion glasses. It had a picture of Abigail and Daniel with their compassion glasses. And, and now to see these young people growing up to help tote someone else. Faith-filled friends. You got to have them. We should grow to... Want to be them. Be very careful who you let close to you, who you let influence you. Mom and dad, be careful with those friends that you let your kids hang around with. I can't do nothing about that. Yes, you can. If you spend a lot of time with doubters, you'll become a doubter. Spend a lot of time with reasoners. You'll become a reasoner and you will reason away your faith. But if you spend some time with faith-filled friends, you'll become faith-filled also. There are some crazy friends and then there are some crazy faith-filled friends. I want the ones that I take the roof off to receive what Jesus has for me. Don't you? Would you stand? I know we got him at Move Church. A few years ago, I said, oh, by the way, Move Church, we want to pay off our land. So I think it's a good idea we go portable again. And we're going to meet in a movie theater. We're going to roll stuff in every Sunday, roll out. We only got a small little window of time to do it. But God's got big things for us, and we're going to move forward. And Now, I know some of y'all weren't that happy. I get it. But that's faith-filled friends. That's people that say, you're going to do what? But you believe the God's, well, you can get us closer to Jesus? Yeah, let's do it. Praise God for you. This church is founded on those friends. There's been some sweaty faith 
to get us to the point we are now. Guess what? We got to have some more sweaty faith to get us where God wants to take us. Same for your personal life. Oh, you just keep going after Jesus, taking one step at a time. Surround yourself with some people. You're going to need some help sometimes. Surround yourself with the right people. Matthew 18, this is what Jesus said. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. This is the reason why so many churches split. So many churches, whether you know they have a problem at that church. Yeah, say, this, say don't want this to happen. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. Ecclesiastes 4, I love this one, says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their tool. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has no other, has not another to lift him up. Yeah, you can say, well, I don't need church. I can be a Christian and I can stay at the house. and no, I don't need church. There will be a time where you need church. I used to have to do the sign at a church. I was an associate pastor. Evan, when you're associate pastor, you got to do stuff that pastor don't want to do, okay? And nobody wanted to change that sign. I had to do that as an associate pastor. And I thought, oh, I know a good one. I know a good little saying I can put up there. And I put this saying, which is so true. And I put... Either this Sunday or one day, my wait, either this Sunday or at life's end. Thank you, Patty. You remembered. Either this Sunday or at life's end, one day you'll be at church, my friend. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Had to be the Lord. Man, we need each other. We need each other. And we want to be those people that can help others. First Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. We're fixing to get ready to pray. I want, um, if you have experienced a miracle from the Lord, I mean, I mean, definitely, okay, you had faith, God did it, just like you needed him to. Might not have been the way that you thought, but he did it. And now you can say, I know it was a miracle from the Lord. I want you without any pressure from anybody, I want you to step out. I want you to come right up front, if you will. You don't have to come. We're not thinking anything about you. This is, I know, a miracle. If I gave you the mic, you could tell me exactly that miracle. It was a miracle for the Lord, from the Lord. So what this does, man, how encouraging is that? Because all you got to do is find one person the Lord has done it for. The Bible says he's no respecter of persons. You just got to find one person he's done it for. If he did it for them, he'll do it for you. I'm glad you came up. Miss Sharon Hartfield, would you come right up here for a minute? I know I didn't check with you, but I know... I know you love me, and I love you, too. Come on up front. I want to close with this just real fast. I remember a time in my life that when the disease hit my body, I've mentioned this at different times, so I won't go into details. And I had a surgery that was supposed to help the symptoms. They wouldn't cure it. And I had the, I had, I had the scar. I had the chest was ripped open, and it didn't help. And I was at home just believing, God, I need you to do something. I need you to do something for me. And I had a, a day where I felt like the Lord made a shift, a turn. And I watched TV. I've shared this one before. I watched TV. T.D. Jakes came on, and he said, God is a God of a turnaround. That's what I remembered. 
Then Jensen Franklin came on after him, and the message was basically the same. God is a God of a turnaround. And, man, I felt faith I felt, for the first time. I was going downhill fast, but I felt faith. And then, so this same day, I'm going to believe, God, you're doing something today. You're doing something. Then somebody came by my house, a pastor friend, he's pastoring right now, came by and he said, God told me to come by and pray for you today. I said, brother, come on. And he prayed a prayer of faith for me. And he, he, I don't even think he left good. And then I think it was Miss Sharon. I know it was you, Miss Sharon. I think it was two other ladies. Was it two other? Tina Odom. Was it Beverly Carmichael also? I think it was, in my mind, there were four faith-filled friends total. They came in, knocked on the door, and said, God told me to come by and pray for you today. And I said, I know it. He's doing something today. And that was a turnaround for me. Even though naturally outside I didn't see any change, it changed in my spirit. I knew it was fixing to happen. And I would look at the mirror and point at myself and say, you are healed in the name of Jesus. That's, that's crazy faith. And it began to happen one day at a time, one day at a time. Things begin to improve. Things begin to get better. Thank the Lord for faith-filled friends. Would you, all, every one of you, line up across the front. Thank you for coming down. Point toward them, if you would. If you need a miracle in your body today, I want you to step out. If you need a miracle today, don't hesitate. A man come to a man. A, a lady come to a, a lady. If you would come, and we're going to pray. Do, you, do we need to bow our head so it's easy? We'll bow our head. Lord, I pray that you would give us the faith to step out again. Lord, help us to believe you again. There's no shame in needing you, and there's no shame in needing help. And, Lord, I pray faith would be birthed today. Father, for what we need from you, I pray it would be birthed today. In the name of Jesus, if you need a miracle, step out. If you need prayer today, step out. You need somebody to agree with you. If you need a faith-filled friend, step out. Don't be ashamed. We'll take just a few moments. Pray in faith, y'all. Pray in faith. Pray believing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Anyone else, it's not too late. Don't hesitate. There's nothing wrong with needing help, needing somebody to agree with you for a miracle. Don't quit asking. Don't quit coming. Don't back up in your faith. Thank you, Lord. You can do it today. You can do it today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for a miracle. If you're up here and you've experienced a miracle, but you need another miracle, turn to someone by you and say, pray for me in faith. Pray for me today. You are a miracle worker, God. You are a miracle worker. Thank you, God. Thank you. Here comes a faith-filled woman of God. Somebody pray with her. You may get healed. You may get touched by praying for her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You are faithful. You are faithful, God. You are faithful. If you have an addiction, you want it broke off of your life, come forward, okay? If you have an addiction, you want it broke off your life. We're going to take just a moment to do this. Come forward and find someone. Hey, I need you to pray with me. If you need to be blessed, okay, you need God to work a miracle in your finances, come find someone. Pray with me. Pray with me. Thank you, God. You're faithful. You're faithful, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. We praise you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord God, for faith-filled friends. Thank you for your spirit that gives us faith, that perfects it in our lives. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. Would you bow your head just a moment as they're praying? If you have sin in your life, let's go ahead and ask the Lord to forgive us. That's the greatest miracle, forgiveness of sins. If you need to give your life to Christ, pray this prayer also. I'm going to give you the prayer. You give God your heart. Let's pray at church out loud. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me so much that you gave your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins. I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. Would you forgive me for all my sins? Would you come into my heart? Would you change my life? And I'll do my best to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Thank you, Lord.
we give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank y'all. Y'all can return to your seat and let me make just a couple of announcements. We'll be dismissed. Don't forget graduates next Sunday, the second service. Send your information in. Also, Membership Sunday is coming up June the 4th. If you're interested in becoming a member at Move Church, uh, we want you to be involved. We are so glad you're a part of the church family. We want you to be a member and a mover. So June the 4th is the Sunday for that. And the time is somewhere, 9 a.m., 9 a.m. I'm like Michelle, I'm having to get it way out there. Don't forget if you're a parent uh, to come and see, a parent of a teenager, come and see Kelly for some exciting news. Let me bless you as you leave. May the Lord bless you and keep you all you have. Come on, let's praise God right here. Thank you for blessing me and keeping me. Ah, uh, thank you, Lord. You haven't given up. You didn't give up on me when I was unlovable, when I was turning from you, when I was backing up in my faith. You were always there for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, let the Lord know how thankful you are. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you that you have kept me. I was once young, but now I'm old, but I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Oh, thank you. Excuse me for getting a little excited. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Have a great Sunday, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We'll hope you do your part by sharing this live stream so that everyone can see. And we can't wait to see you back here next week.